Welcome to People and Places Today. Today's episode is brought to you by the Golisano Children's Hospital of Southwest Florida, part of the Lee Memorial Healthcare System, and Christoph's Restaurant on McGregor, proudly supporting the Golisano Children's Hospital. And now your host, Melissa DeHaven. Good morning and welcome to People and Places Today, the show that takes you on an in-depth look into the people, places, and things to do in our community. In this episode, we get to spend the day with a brave young man who has been through so much and is not alone in this battle. The Golisano Children's Hospital treats about 25 children per day with cancer. We went with Chanson, an 11-year-old leukemia patient, and his mom, Destiny, who is also one of my best friends, to get an in-depth look at what they go through and what their typical day is like. There we go. We met with Chanson and his oh mom God. as they arrived at the hospital for what typically oh is a long Chance. day of treatment. You're you looking like a rock Childhood star, cancer, though hat. rare, is treated by a team cool. of experts. Got your book? Because these right. cancers are uncommon, right. outcomes right. are more successful right. when Let's treatment go. is managed by a children's cancer center, such as the Golisano Children's Hospital of Southwest Florida. Yeah, we've been coming here for about six years now. So, and so Chance, you, Chanson was first diagnosed when he was six. He was diagnosed when he was six, six. years old in May of 2007, and he underwent three and a half years of treatment. He was off treatment for a year and a half when he relapsed mm -hmm. in February of 2012. Mm -hmm. So, we're very and now he case. has um, just. A a couple months left of treatment and he'll be he has a year left, a year well left. almost a year, till May of next year and then he'll be done with treatment. So May 5th is his end date right now. <laughs> Thank you. Add zero zero, step on the scale. Sit in the big chair. You never do. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what you're having done today, babe? Uh, all day infusion. Oh, okay. We have a chemo today then. Okay. Okay. Is he count dependent today? It's a good question. Is this the first week you got this? Yes. It's the cyclophosphamide. Oh, if cyclophosphamide is omitted for low counts, continue with vincristine. Okay. So what it is is he has certain levels he has to make. Uh -huh. He'll have they check his platelets, his red blood cells, mm -hmm. and his white blood cells. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it'll tell, he has to be 750, which is his ANC. It's a combination mm -hmm. of white blood cells, and that tells his ability to fight infection. It has mm -hmm. to be a certain level for the administer the chemotherapy, and his platelets have to be at a certain level, which is mm -hmm. 75, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. 75 or above, otherwise they hold. Okay, so everything that meant it was good? The majority of our families couldn't tell you that that succinctly. Mm -hmm. That's... Uh, that's somebody who's been doing this for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna, they'll take a blood and they'll mm -hmm. send it to the lab and we'll wait to see what they come back at. And then depending on how they come back, we'll depend why his treatment looks like today. Oh, okay. Jensen, like your that. allergy to vancomycin is only red man's, is that correct? Correct. Right. And there's no other allergies? No. Yeah. All right, medicines that you take. X-Jade, how many tablets? Three. And did you take that this morning? No, he'll take it when we go. And your Lovenox, it's 60 milligrams? Correct. The 0.6 mLs, and you're doing it twice a day? Yes. He's got some bruising from it, so I'm curious what his platelets are today. Mm -hmm. He He's took coming. it today, this morning? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to get a level. What time did he take it today? Uh, he took it at, was it 9.30? Oh, 9.30? 9.30. Okay. Oh, 9, yeah, 9.30. So if you're still here at 9.30 because you're getting hydration from Cytoxin, we'll get a level. That's perfect. And 6NP, when did he finish that? Well, he stopped 
um, for camp. So two weeks ago he was right. held because his ANC was low. Yeah. So we're waiting to see if he can restart. Any other medicines that I didn't mention? You said Ryan Sandy. Did you mention Kepra? I did. Okay. Yeah, Kepra, you've, I've got you taken 750, one tablet. Yes. Morning and evening. Yes. Yeah, we, we did some. That sum is an estimate. We, uh, we had an hour long show, did about three minutes. <laughs> Look down for me, I'm not that tall. There you go. Say ah. Uh. Ah. Perfect. Go ahead and lay down for me. You're on best behavior today. You haven't jumped off the table once. You haven't got <laughs> That's not the norm. <laughs> I usually get a lot more lift than this. <laughs> Jesse, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Good Dr. man. <laughs> All right. So now what's next? Well, we are going to the procedure room where we, they will access my port so that I can use it to get transfusions. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they'll also take his blood from that same port, which mm -hmm. is just, I want to show them how it's covered right now. <coughs> yes, we have it covered at the moment. Uh-huh. Because we put... We have a cream oh. that we put on, as you yeah. saw this morning, uh -huh. um, on his port, and that numbs it. Uh -huh. So, so his port, and then has the cream on it that will numb the surface skin before they access it with mm -hmm. the needle. Mm. And does that help? Does that really help so you can't feel like yeah. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Oh. How his port works is that the main lines go through his neck and into the main artery of his heart. And the reason they have to do that is, one, they would be sticking him with IVs, and two, the chemo can burn the veins and cause third-degree burns. So oh. they have to do it through a thick artery. Oh. What that actual meant for this, this is original that he had taken out after his first treatment. Is that's what it looks like. And then all the tubing is connected to this bottom part and that's where the blood gets pulled from and the chemo gets infused into it. Can, can you feel it? I mean, does it, is it just feel natural now or does it oh, bother you yeah, ever? It doesn't bother me at all. Oh, that's good. The only difference is if you felt really well mm -hmm. and I walked on my chest, since it's below the skin, you can like, feel a bump there. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah you there. can feel it. So when I put his cream on in the morning, I'll feel to make sure it's in the right spot. Uh -huh. And I'm okay. And also when the doctors access my port, I mean the nurse, she feels for where it is so she knows where to do it. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you were diagnosed, you had to have the port, they yeah, put the port in right away? here. The, they put the port in within days of diagnosis, you know, two, two days usually they go into surgery for it. Yeah, so I had it. You had it on this side originally. Mm. And when I'm, you know, I was out of treatment and I finished treatment, I got it out. And when I relapsed, I got this new one, which is still. Mm. Yeah. That's good that it makes it easier so it doesn't hurt as much and they don't yeah. have to. Yeah. That's nice. On some occasions, Chanson's family comes out to show support and spend time with him during yeah. his long days at the hospital. One of the most important parts of Chanson's treatment is accessing his port. Ports cause less inconvenience and have a low risk of infection. Therefore, ports are commonly used for patients that need long-term treatment. So I'll be right back with your tray and we'll get things done, okay? All right. <laughs> Thanks, Greta. Sure. What they'll do is they'll take blood first. Mm -hmm. It'll go to the lab. Mm -hmm. We will find out what his counts are. He makes counts, which are those numbers we talked about. Mm -hmm. They will start infusing, which okay. they'll hydrate him. He'll do the infusion, then they'll hydrate him afterwards. Or if he doesn't make counts, then we'll just do one chemo drug today. Oh, okay. All right, do you want to? The bruising on Chanson's abdomen are caused from the shots he must take every morning and evening, caused by the stroke he suffered due to a rare side effect from the, the chemotherapy. In that area. And this is where they inserted the port, and the lines go up through his neck here, and this is where we'll access it. While the nurse is accessing Chanson's port, we have the opportunity to sit and speak with the Golisano Children's Hospital Medical Director. And coming up a bit later in the show, we speak with the Child Life Specialist who will tell us about some of the many great services the Golisano Children's Hospital of Southwest Florida offers their patients. Why is it so important that we have the Children's Hospital here in Lee County? Um, children mm -hmm. are yeah. not young adults. Mm -hmm. They really are more than that. The diseases they have, 
as well as the way their body behaves and the way they adapt to illness is very different from adults. Mm -hmm. So there's a great need for care for children. Mm -hmm. And the Golisano Children's Hospital has always had the philosophy that children should be treated as close to home as possible. Cancer treatment has changed a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. um, we have three modalities that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You mentioned two of them, chemotherapy and radiation. The third one, obviously, is surgery. Mm -hmm. And well, the way we treat cancer is a combination of all three. Mm -hmm. There are some cancers that need a surgical excision where you remove the cancer. And there are some that will need chemotherapy alone, mm -hmm. and some that may need radiation alone. Mm -hmm. And with the majority, it's a combination of the three. Mm -hmm. And is the treatment times, does that vary by what type of cancer, how it aggressive it is? Absolutely, it does. Mm -hmm. um, leukemia, which is our most common cancer. In fact, acute lymphocytic leukemia is the most common cancer in children. Mm -hmm. And the treatment is around three and a half years for boys and two and a half years for girls. And for some of our other cancers, like acute myelogenous leukemia or AML, the treatment is about six months. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very aggressive treatment, so mm -hmm. it does vary quite a bit from a few weeks to several years. Mm -hmm. However, we continue to follow the patients even beyond the treatment for several years, looking for side effects, mm -hmm. uh, what we call late effects of cancer therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think is uh, the most significant difference between uh, an adult with cancer and a child with cancer? I mean, differences are huge. Mm -hmm. The types of cancers are different. Mm -hmm. And in adult cancers, the intent is to give them good quality of life. With children, our intent for treatment is cure. Mm -hmm. Because we're looking for a lifespan, mm -hmm. not just can we buy them a few more years. Mm -hmm. Um, the types of cancers that we have with children are usually genetic in nature, which means they may have been born with a predisposition or something happened while they were developing that caused it. The cancers that we have in adult are usually related to the environment in the majority of cases mm -hmm. because of things that may have happened during your life or things you've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're very different cancers. As far as the way we treat, it's also different. We tend to use more chemotherapy mm -hmm. and try to avoid radiation as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And the reason is radiation has long-term side effects. Mm -hmm. So we try to minimize the side effects while mm -hmm. we maximize the outcomes. Mm -hmm. Children also tolerate chemotherapy a lot better than adults. Mm -hmm. Children? They tolerate chemotherapy. Oh, they they tolerate. do better with chemotherapy uh, more than the, an, an adult. Okay. Um, a child would, uh, would get the same dose as an adult for some chemotherapies and they will bounce right back. Oh. It is obviously because it's a young body that is growing mm -hmm. and has not reached its full maturity and they have a better ability to flex in and out. Mm -hmm. And they really bounce back. We always say children are resilient. Mm -hmm. They're tough and you can hit them with whatever you want and they'll come right back. They want to live, mm -hmm. they want to have fun. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that's all the difference. Their attitude is different. Yes. When you and I are sick, we probably complain and whine about it for months mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. When a child is sick, they want to feel better, they want to move on, mm -hmm. they want to have fun, mm -hmm. they want to go play, they want to do things yeah. that children want to do. And so the, our attitude is different, our philosophy is different. And in general, we, we would do anything to save the life of a child. Mm -hmm. And so most children that are diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. go on clinical trials or research protocols. Mm -hmm. Most adults that are diagnosed with cancer have therapies that are provided by the oncologist, mm -hmm. not necessarily on a research or clinical trial. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the biggest differences. Mm -hmm. That's why the outcomes for children has gone up from 1960 where the majority of children will die within a few months for leukemia. So most recent data suggests that the survival for leukemia in children is 92%. Wow, that's incredible. And, and that's and due speaking to the about five-year survival, wow. which means they're cured, wow. and that's due to research. We have, over the years, found out what works, what doesn't work, mm -hmm. what combination of drugs is better than another combination. And we've learned from those, and we've been able to improve on them, 
and that's why we can uh, tout a number like 92 percent for cure wow that's incredible hi guys how did everything go everything go good yeah 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 port is access port is access blood has been sent to the lab oh, and good. we're just waiting for counts okay good and now you're just getting fluids is that what this is? Yeah, he has to do, for the drug he gets, which is called Cytoxin, they, it's hard on the kidneys, so they do two hours of prehydration and an hour of post-hydration. Oh, wow. Three, three hours, did you say? What's that? Yeah, and then the chemo runs for an hour, so it's four hours total. Wow, okay. And then are you going to take us and introduce us to the child life specialist? Is that what we're going to yes, go? Yes, Stacy. We're going to go upstairs, uh -huh. and he wants to take you around the fourth floor and oh. show you when he does stay in the hospital, when the children here stay in the hospital, what that floor looks like. Okay. And then Stacy is going to sit and talk with you about the child life program that is a really wonderful program they provide here. Oh, okay, good. The new Golisano Children's Hospital's planned completion date is 2017. Presently, the hospital has 98 beds and will be expanding to 128 beds, which can be further expanded if the population grows and the need is there to 160 beds. So I want more data about this. They're doing a day in the life of a cancer patient. The hospital now covers six county areas from Marco Island to Northport and as far east as Clewiston and Moorhaven. Oh, that's good. And they get to keep coming. PlayStation, nice. TV. The TVs are new. Oh, these nice. are our new babies, and all these will be TVs Bed. just like this will be in the new children's hospital that they're building. Have you guys had to spend a lot of time in the hospital throughout the years? We um, this last year has been the most, uh, but this last year we spent about on average six months not at once, but six months over the past year in the hospital. Oh, wow. About every other week we were in the hospital wow. for sometimes three days. And if he gets a fever of 100.4, we could be in here for weeks at a time. There was one point we were in here for three weeks straight. Wow, and what are, what are some of the things that make you have to stay here? So like if you come and you get your blood there's, um, counts. There's two uh, main things that will make him stay here. Um, one is infusions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of his treatment, it's very high, high doses because he's a relapse cancer patient um, of these drugs and they keep him in here to monitor how he does through the treatment. Through the higher doses. Through the higher doses and they have to hydrate and get it out of his system so we stay until he's no longer what they call toxic levels of it out of his system. The other reason we come in is because of a fever. Because the chemotherapy he receives will knock down his immune system. He doesn't have a normal person's ability to fight infection, so they mm -hmm. compensate with that using antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So we will come in if he has a fever and they will start immediately a broad spectrum antibiotic and he will get that while they do blood tests and blood cultures and find out what's really going on for his safety. Wow. But he will stay in the hospital until one, they see his counts rising and the second factor is he has to be fever free for 24 hours. So it's kind of a crapshoot when we come in yeah. here how long so we're going to be. It could be a couple days It could be, a couple days, couple days, week, it could couple be weeks. weeks. Wow. So depending what's going on with him. Yeah. Uh, the thing we worry about with him and, and cancer patients with, with leukemia like him are bacterial infections more so than the viral. A cold will go away and they're not worried about a cold. Mm -hmm. A bacterial infection, there's nothing, no immune system to fight mm -hmm. that. So he needs antibiotics to do yeah. it for him. And he did have an infection this year, right? He, he had, had several. Oh, he had, he had several, several bacterial infections. Yeah, so. um, one of the chemotherapies he got is very, very strong, and it will knock out his immune system, and his own bacteria in his body can start to attack. So mm -hmm. healthy bacteria can turn bad because there's nothing keeping balance. Mm -hmm. And they do an incredible job of monitoring him very, very closely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how are, how are you with dealing with everything? Is it? And you guys always have this positive outlook and attitude all the time. I mean, that's what yeah. I see all the time. And I just always wonder, you know, it's like a, a parent's worst nightmare to yeah. go through this and to see your child have to suffer through this. Like, It is. Um, one thing, my inspiration comes from watching Chanson. Mm -hmm. He'll go through all of these things, but at the end of the day, he's smiling. Mm -hmm. So who am I to sit around crying and miserable yeah. if he can find a smile? He's the one going through it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just very positive and we don't think about any other angle outcome than him getting better and we just have to go through this to get him healthy again. All right, I'm here with Stacy Metz and she's the child life specialist here at the Children's Hospital. Stacy, I hear 
a lot of great things about your position and job here. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do? Sure. We, we have a very unique role. Mm -hmm. Our job is to help normalize the hospital experience and make it not such a scary place. Mm -hmm. It's very important in all of our departments, but especially in an area like hematology, oncology, where you have the chronic patients mm -hmm. that are coming in and out and you know they're going to be a long-term patient and you're going to see them numerous times throughout the week. Mm -hmm. So you want them to not be scared about coming in the door, you know, to know what to expect, which is part of our role. We do teaching to make sure they know all about their diagnosis. They know everything that's going to happen to them before it happens. Our goal is to also make sure that everybody speaks in a child-friendly term. Mm -hmm. You know, many times you go to the doctor's office and they speak in what we say, doctor speak. Mm -hmm. And it's what parents understand. Our yeah. goal is to make sure the kids know what those words are. So even that's if great. the physician is speaking to the parents, I'm in there to kind of observe and see how the patient's reacting to what's being said to clarify what needs to be said. Mm -hmm. Great. And you were telling me um, that you guys also not only are informing the patient child, but you also go out into the community. Mm -hmm. into One of the, the other things that we do in child life is we're very community based. Mm -hmm. So we're going to help our patients throughout anything that they need to do, be it it's in the hospital or when they return to school. Because mm -hmm. obviously, when a child is diagnosed, they come in, they're here for at least two weeks. They've been out of school. Now all of a sudden they have to go back to school. They may have gained weight due to medications. They may look different. Mm -hmm. They may have started to lose mm -hmm. their hair due to chemotherapy. So our job is to go into the actual classroom and to talk with the students and to let them know what's going on and to kind of educate them about their mm -hmm. diagnosis. Yeah. So one, they're not afraid of the child. And two, so the child's not afraid to go back. So they know that they have the supportive base that they're gonna walk back into. Wow, that's absolutely wonderful. It, it, you know what, it's great. It really helps our kids come in. Sometimes I think it helps the parents more yeah. than the child. We always invite the parent to come in and listen to any presentation we do. Yeah, and it keeps really everyone mm -hmm. informed. It's so great that you you have the kids on that level so Absolutely. that they're understanding Absolutely. to get past the fear and they're mm -hmm. not as much afraid. And it helps the parent because it's one job that they don't have. We become that, li that liaison mm -hmm. with the school mm -hmm. so the parent doesn't have to worry about Oh, okay, so they have it. They got admitted. I have to call the school. We yeah. can help them with oh, that. We can send a letter to the school to say, wow. this is what's going on. They've been admitted to the hospital. We'll update you as we can. So it's one less thing the parent has to do. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you so much You're for being with us. You're very welcome. Thank we you. We really appreciate it. And thank you thank for everything you, you do. That's Anytime. Great. Thank you. I'm here at Chanson's house. He invited us in. They're back from treatment. And we're also here with his brother, Colin. Hello. So how did everything go today at the hospital? Very good. Everything went good? That's good. And was how long were you guys there for? What time did you guys get home? Um, home at 5.30, so I'm from 10.30 to 5.30. So yeah, it takes a couple hours. Yeah. And then so not only at the hospital you have treatment, but once you get home, every day you have a routine that you follow, right? Yep, twice a day. Twice a day. Come to the kitchen and I will show you. Yeah, okay. and then I have to take my shot, which is Lovox. And his Keppra is an anti-seizure medicine. Mm -hmm. So one of the... Here it is right here. One of the, one of the drugs he had uh, caused him to get a blood clot and had a stroke, and which causes his brain to seize, and this is an anti-seizure medicine that keeps him having a seizure. Was it hard for you to swallow those? Um, first? No, I'm actually very used to taking mm. pills over the years that I've been diagnosed. Yeah. Having to take a lot of pills, I've gotten used to it. So in the morning you have to take your pill, and then at night you have to take yep. your pill? At the current point of treatment, here's his box of medicine. Can you want to show your box of medicine, Jan? Sure. So cycles change with his chemotherapy tonight because he was in a chemo infusion. He didn't have to take as many pills, but this is his box of pills. Oh, wow. That is medication. And there are times and certain points of treatment where he has to take up to 21 pills a night. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So these are his shots. He's in the bedroom, you do. He does it in the morning and at night. It is Lovenox, it's a blood thinner, and it is also because of the stroke that he has to take this twice a day to keep his levels low enough so he doesn't have another stroke. Mm -hmm. And this is shot. Now it's time for the shot. You ready? Yep. Mm 
What a cool bedroom. Really, only if it's nice and quiet. Oh, only if it's nice and quiet. Yeah. So do you usually put some like some music, or um, the kids are usually running around. No, actually, we try to keep it in a room where it's kind of just me and mommy. Oh. Sometimes. Just grab your tissue really quick. Cover your eyes and just let silence. And this is this is the morning too, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. One's quiet. Done. Yep. Good job, buddy. Good job. Yeah. Buddy. And it always just kind of slightly burns a little yeah. bit afterwards. Yeah. And it's been for like, you had to do that at the beginning too, when he first got it years ago with the shot in the stomach too? Yeah, because yeah. this. He had a blood clot in his arm that time. Mm -hmm. Then he had to do it as well. It's because of this Seven. drug they gave me called. Pig and sparaginates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can cause the blood to over or under coagulate. He over coagulates. Yeah, this is the second time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they said I'll officially not have to get that anymore. Nope. Oh, the. That he one. never has to get it again. Oh, that's so now that we it. know what it. Yeah. And then how long, much longer that you have to do the shots? In mm -hmm. August, they'll do a CAT scan on him an MRI and see if the clot is gone um, from his brain and if it is he will not have to do any more shots. If it's mm -hmm. still there or there's remnants of it, we will have to do three more months of shots. Wow. You are so brave, Jansen. Mm -hmm. You're one of the bravest, sweetest, most positive people I know. And I'm so happy to know you. Jansen's day is done and time to rest. Tomorrow he will start all over again. He's just one example of hundreds of brave, remarkable children in our community fighting cancer at the Golisano Children's Hospital. It has been an honor and a privilege to share in this brave boy's fight. There are many of kids like Chanson, and we are so fortunate to have a state-of-the-art facility for our children right here in Lee County. If you want to help support the Children's Hospital, you can learn more by checking out their website. Well, that's our show for this week. I'm Melissa DeHaven, and I hope you'll join me every Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. for People and Places Today. Today's episode was brought to you by the Golisano Children's Hospital of Southwest Florida. To learn more about how you can help these truly amazing patients, please call 239-343-6950 or visit childrenshospitalgoal.org. And Christoph's on McGregor, proudly supporting the Golisano Children's Hospital of Southwest Florida. Visit them for lunch or dinner or to cater your next event.